Hey everyone, let's take a look at how to create a simple chroma key shader in Unity using the Universal Render Pipeline. I have with me a simple small video clip with a green background, which we're going to make transparent. All right, so how we're going to make this work is we'll have a quad in our scene, we'll attach a video player component to it, provide it the video clip we want to uh, use the chroma key shader on. We'll have created a material that will have the chroma key shader applied to it. That material will be applied to the same quad. Now, the video player is actually going to render to a render texture. And the render texture is actually going to be applied to our chroma key shader. And that will be our way of achieving this effect. I understand it looks a little all over the place, but it won't be so bad once we start working in Unity. Let's start by creating our video player on a quad. So I'll create a new 3D object in Unity. I'll go ahead and use a quad, nice and simple. And I'm going to give this quad a video player component. That video player component needs our video clip. So I'll drag and drop that into there. Now, since I'm using URP, I'm not going to want to use the material property main text. I would be using base map. Now, after we're through, this won't matter as we'll be rendering to a render texture. But for now, let's just do a quick test. As you can see, the video is working just fine. Now, one of the things you might notice is that it's kind of dark. And that's because it's taking into account the shading in the environment. So when we create our shader, we'll want it to be unlit. And that's what we'll start with next. We're going to create a new shader that is using the Universal Render Pipeline. And we'll use a unlit shader graph. Okay, and I'll just call this chroma key. I mentioned we'll be using a render texture. So for us to input that into this shader, we'll need to create a node called a sample texture 2D node. This will allow us to input some texture. Now, I'm just going to drag this out and just have a node that is a texture 2D asset. I'm going to convert this into a property so I can drag and drop this in the Unity Inspector window. The next node I like to create is a color mask node. Now, this color mask node can take a texture and say, pick a color of that texture and make it equal to one on that pixel and everything else equal to zero with the options for some range adjustments and fuzziness in between. To help visualize this better, I'm just going to use an example texture. Now, if I was to mask the color green, so this black node here, this color node, I'll make green and you'll see how the part of this texture that was green is now white or one and everything else is black or zero. Now we can expose some of these parameters to make this a little bit more configurable in the Unity Inspector. But before that, let's make sure we complete this node entirely. Now what we're going to want to do is take all this white part and make that part transparent in our scene. So what we'll need to do is make sure that this shader graph is, has a alpha channel. Right now it only has a base color. So I'm going to go to the graph settings here and I'm going to change the surface from opaque to transparent. And now you can see I have an alpha channel. Now if I was to make this output into the alpha, everything but the green part would be transparent. So I need to invert this. And I could do that with this wonderful one minus node. So with this, I now have just the portion I'd like to render as my alpha. And I could take the regular texture and put that into the base color. And that largely completes our shader. Now, if you would like, it would be a great idea to expose some of these parameters. You can create, for example, a color node. It's a basic output. And you know we could give it a default value that's much like the color green. And once that's hooked up, you can right click on that. And I'll say convert to property. Now the name is just color. I'll actually change that to 
color to replace or remove. The texture 2D node that I have, I'll just call this by texture. I have a range value. This allows me quite a bit of leverage in terms of how much of it I want because you can smooth out certain things. So I'll expose this and it'll really be helpful to be able to manipulate that through the Unity Inspector. So I'll go ahead and just set the range to 0 0.3 for the default. And I'll convert this to a property as well. And I'll call this one by range. And fuzziness is also a really handy property. It smooths out, kind of like anti-aliasing, the edges. I'll expose that property as a float as well. And I'll set the default value to 0 0.1 or something. I'll call that property fuzziness. Now, our shader graph is complete. Let's save this asset and head back into our editor. Now we need a material for the shader. So I'll right click in here and create a new material. I'll call this our chroma key mat. And I'll click and drag this shader onto it. If I was to apply this onto the quad itself now, you'll see that the green part of the image is transparent. So we can already see that it's working. But how do we make this work for a video? For that, we need to create a render texture. And I'll call this our video RT. I'll go back to our quad, and one of the options under video player is render mode. I'm going to change that from material override to render texture. So this video can output onto a texture, our render texture. Next, let's select our material. Here we can see the texture property is using that default that we set but we want to change that with our render texture. Now, our video probably won't fit by default, so I'm going to go back to our quad and change the aspect ratio from fit horizontally to stretch. Now, you'll notice another thing. Let me expand our material one more time. The actual color isn't quite uh, removed. There may be a problem with the range value that we've set or the fuzziness. So you can alter those values as needed. For example, I'm just going to say this is black and set that to zero. And I'll click on this eyedropper and choose the actual green color we want to replace. There we go. And I'll just increase the range a little bit until I'm satisfied with what I'm replacing. I could also decrease or increase the fuzziness to apply that kind of anti-aliasing that's going on. There we go. I'm quite happy with this result. So let's hit play and see it in action. Well, there you go. We have a nice chroma key shader in Universal Render Pipeline. Now you can fine tune this shader by repeating the color masking for different shades of green, all within one shader. But uh, that's it for now. Thank you for watching and best of luck in applying this shader.